Welcome back, my friends. Today we are stenciling and adding stitching. So I've titled this Stencil and Stitch. We actually aren't actually stitching. I have pre-stitched to save time this month. But we are going to stencil this pretty palette and we are going to use Color Cube 173 as our inspiration. So I adore the color cube and I wanted something untraditional. And this is completely outside my box, but I thought, hmm, it's different. So let's go for it. And we're just gonna take this first stencil and we are going to line this up with our card. I've cut this card panel down so that I can have an eighth of an inch border all the way around, figuring I'm probably gonna wanna frame this card. So for this, for the leaves, I'm gonna use Alta News Eucalyptus. And I'm not gonna go too crazy on the blending here. We're just gonna use three colors and that's it. This is a pretty simple stencil. I am using my Alta News Sticky Mat here. That way I don't have to pick or hold the paper or the stencil. So that is a beautiful thing. So I'm just gonna use my blender brushes here and just start giving it a light little coat. I like to start light because you can always build up, especially with these little alt new brushes. So that's what I love about them. I like the flat surfaces. So we're just gonna go all over and then see where we wanna add a little more ink when we're done. Remember, we're going for a softer color palette and I'm going both directions. I'm going clockwise and counterclockwise to make sure we get in all those little nooks and grooves. These are water-based inks, so they do dry back so they always lighten a little bit after you apply them to the paper because they are actually dyeing the paper. That's what the dye means in your water-based dye inks is that it's dyeing the paper rather than sitting on top, which is what your pigment inks do. And that's the reason that they take so long to dry because they don't dye anything. They just sit on top of your paper, which is why you have to heat set them. It's just a little crafty tip for you. Okay, now I might go in, this blend, softening up a couple blends there. I might just go in just a tiny bit right right in the center just a little extra right there in the center of the bases when you go over a second layer with dye ink it gives you a second color so you can do a little bit of blending without even having an extra color so we'll just do that to a little of them just for a little transition Looks good. Let's peel and reveal. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, set that one to a side, side to clean later. So we'll line up our branches. And this was the color I wasn't quite sure about because some of these branches are on the leaves and some of them are not. Some of them are just twigs. So we're just going to see what happens here. I want to take my time lining this one up because I'm not, I don't have an actual guideline to guide me on this as like a corner or registration mark. I didn't, you know, line it up with a corner because I'm, my paper is smaller than my actual stencil. So I'm just taking my time and getting it where I think I like it best. 
Remember, you're the artist. There's no reason to rush these things. And your art will be better for it. So make sure you stick it all the way around your sticky mat. These mats are wonderful. And both Alta New has a sticky mat and Walfa Flower has a mat as well. I have both of them and they both are amazing. So I'm going to close our eucalyptus and I'm going to open up Mocha. I do use a different blender brush for each blend or color family. See how dark that is. Okay, we're going to start light and see what happens. Alrighty. I want to peel this back and see what this looks like on the branches. Let's see if I need darker, lighter, what? Okay, I like that. Okay, looks good. I just wanted to feel, I have not practiced this, so I just wanted to see how I felt about it. And it looks pretty good. So, I wanted to use each of the colors in the color cube. So, just going for it. That's the beauty of the color cube, is just going for it. And then, usually, magic happens. Well guys, I was talking about the color cube and I had to pause the video for a moment and guess what? I did not turn the video back on and I proceeded to finish the panel. So, <laughs> what I was trying to say about the color cube is that Spellbinders now carries it as well. So, check your prices and if you're interested in the color cube, see who has it on sale the best. I have both links below. Okay, so here is the finished actual stencil. I finished the actual branches is what we are working on and all I did was add the berries. The berries don't actually touch the ends of the branches. Um, and I went over them really kind of haphazardly. So some was a little lighter, some are a little darker. They look just real natural. And I love that about this color scheme is it's really soft and forgiving. And let's see what the bow looks like on it. Okay, so I've got the bow here. And remember we have the teal and the creamy left, right? So I pulled in the teal for our bow. And the creamy, I've pulled in Alta News Brushed Rose cardstock. Now the Brushed Rose also coordinates with the DMC metallic thread. So I use these together and this, the bow piece is very easy to stitch. It's just straight up and down. So I didn't figure you needed to see that this time since we were doing the stenciling as well. This piece here that you add on is uh, the inside of the bow. So you can do that in a darker color to show shadow and depth. You could also ink blend this to make it just a little darker. It's totally up to you. Now this back piece, I just cut a secondary outline um, from the piece that does this. And then I offset it just to have that extra color there. So that was just me adding a little extra. So that's just something else you can do. So that is going to be our main bow part. Now these pieces are stitched a little differently, these tails. They have only five holes at the top, but they have extras at the bottom. Now there are, as normal, there are debossed little lines under here that you can follow. Some die cuts do that well. Some die cut machines don't impress very well. But they're there if your machine is strong enough. And um, so you go from one hole, this first hole down here, first hole to the second hole. Then you go from this second hole to here, the second hole back to here. So these first two holes have two stitches down. 
the center one goes straight down just once. And then each of these go down to two separate holes. And that's how you get that spread. So those can either go like this, or you could spread them out like this also. So you see, you can, you, you can have options. You can, you know, move them more farther out and have your bow a little wider if you want. Or you could have them come straight down like the photo shows. It's however you want to do your art. Now this is the center and it's just the normal like snowflake kind of star where you're going everything is from out to in the center and you know that because the center hole is the larger hole so that's what tells you to do that. And I did the same thing I've offset all of them with the outline die that they give you. So I've done the bow there. Now these little pieces here are your pieces that stick right under here. You don't have to make this into a present. You could just use your bow on pretty much anything you want. Oh, let me change that around because my offset I want on the top. So I did the offset just on one side there. I think I want it on the top. And then this one I cut and moved it down because when I cut the foil it didn't seem like it was long enough so I just put a little slice in here and cut this piece that's going to be behind the bow and no one will see so that if you're seeing that that's what that is I just did that because I'm super picky but <laughs> I'm just a super picky crafter so this one will go right here and those will all assemble down like like so and that is going to be our card and I don't think this one is going to have a sentiment I think I'm going to do this one just like so stitch and stencil what do you all think do you like it A wrapped up present. I'd like to receive that present, wouldn't you? I'll leave a finished picture here at the end after I do all the gluing. I won't make you sit and watch the gluing, but I just wanted to give you some ideas of something a little different to use with your kits this month. I hope you've enjoyed and that you come back and see me in the next video. Love you guys. Bye-bye for now.